letting the audience build. Just a little uh, heads up. There are uh, leaf blowers ahead, so it will get noisy. So we will just have to bear through that. Uh, for those of you that are uh, jumping on and you always like to know what we're going to cover today, I'll give that to you quick as we build up the audience. So, uh, number one, for the most part, we're going to talk about Comey. A lot to talk about there. We discussed it a little bit yesterday during the hearings, but um, there has been a lot that's gone on since then. So we will discuss that quick. And as I said, I'm approaching these lawn mower, uh, lawn mowers and leaf blowers, so it's going to probably get pretty noisy um, for a couple seconds anyway. And then yeah, we've got guys driving 100 miles an hour down the side block. Uh, then uh, another thing we'll talk about is the president's tweets. And the third and last part, uh, and which I think is the most important part, we'll talk about uh, immigration and a thing called DACA, which is deferred action for what they call dreamers. And so that's uh, the extent of our walk and talk today. As you see, I'm back in the street, uh, not at the estate today, and uh, but I will be heading back there. And that is that. So uh, I think we have waited long enough we begin so if you were on a uh, spaceship and you traveled to Mars yesterday you probably didn't get to see the testimony of former FBI director James Comey but assuming that you weren't on Mars no matter where else you were in the world you saw what took place if you didn't watch the whole thing which I can't say I didn't blame you uh, you saw clips of it and the clips, as far as I'm concerned, were just as powerful, or just as meaningful, or just as stupid, whichever way it is that you want to look at the clip, as they were, they are just like that in part, as they are in whole. And so, anyway, if we were to really just drill down into some of the more important things that took place during that hearing, uh, here's my takeaway, and I hope you agree with me, and if you don't agree with me, love to hear about it politely the president has forever been under this dark cloud of the Russia narrative and for those of you who've been with me well before the election you know that I told you on I think day two after the election or shortly thereafter that the Russia narrative was going to be the narrative they played for quite some time because it was a very powerful message it was a very powerful stain and if they could keep that latched onto the president forever and ever and ever, it would ultimately be the thing that would create uh, not only a presidency that couldn't get anything done, but it would also create a situation to where it is that the president would have a very hard time getting anything through Congress, a very hard time getting uh, through the midterms, and a brutally hard time getting reelected. And so I will say they have done a remarkable job at lying to the American people. When I say they, I mean the Democrats and the, and the lamestream media. Yesterday, James Comey put a lot of things to bed. And I mean a lot of things to bed. And so one of the more important parts that he put to bed was the fact that the president was never under any sort of investigation whatsoever for colluding with the Russians. Now, today, there are so many people in the mainstream media who have massive egg on their face. And so far, the only person who I have seen even take this much accountability for that is uh, Chris Matthews over at MSNBC. Other than that, and when I say this much, it was pretty lame. Other than that, they are trying, the lamestream media, to try to hang on to anything they possibly can. They're now refocusing on, oh, we've got to see if we've got these tapes from inside that meeting between Comey and President Trump when President Trump asked to speak to Comey alone. That's even if there is a tape. And the reason why they're going along that route of they're going to want the tapes is because let's assume there is no tape. What they do then is they try to make it look as if the president is a liar. At the same time as the president never said there were tapes. He said something to the extent, and I don't quote him, but the tweet was, you better hope there are no tapes. 
So there goes the next drama. Get ready for that. That will be the next path they take uh, and try to drag this thing through the mud. Because basically it's come down to there is no collusion between President Trump and the Russians or Putin. <coughs> That's number one. Number two, excuse me, number two is, and this is very important, but of course this will die out. In fact, it's probably already died out already. Comey basically said yesterday that a, an incredible amount of stuff that he has read in these papers, the New York Times, the Washington Post, USA Today, I mean, he didn't name them, but we know who they are, that they were just downright ridiculous, that listening to some of these accusations and things of that nature of unnamed sources were just laughable and ridiculous. And so it is amazing how it is that we can debunk these stories that are in these um, I don't even want to call them newspapers anymore. They're more like rags in these in these rags, and yet they still operate, and people still tune in, and they still click. And I, I just I'm beside myself. And and what makes matters worse, I mean, and I mean totally worse, is you look at the Washington Post and ABC News, two of the more guilty parties that there are. George Stephanopoulos spreading a bunch of fake news and a bunch of head fake headlines. I mean, geez, for those of you who were just on our walk and talk the other day, you saw me show you the picture of where they pretended, um, and I'm talking about reporters in Ohio, pretended that they were standing at a crime scene, and yet when you took the picture, you know, the guy went, there was a guy who went by and took a picture, and you could see it was fake crime scene tape that they put up. They staged the entire thing. You look at, you know, if you look at that, ABC News and Washington Post are on the partner list for Facebook to deem what is fake and what is not fake news. I mean, it is just so blatant. And you would think at this point, Facebook, to try to save some level of credibility, would turn around and say, you know what, considering all this stuff here, we're going to have to take you off the list. No way. No way will they ever do that. And so the rest of us just sit here and we sort of laugh. But you know, you could only carry a lie, you could only carry BS for so long, and eventually it all comes to a head. And so it's coming to a head. We know. We know that there's absolutely zero credibility in these places. And uh, James Comey yesterday proved it. He proved it when he said it. Now the other part, which is just shining through, there's so many parts. The other part that's shining through is everything that we've always known. Things like myself, things like Sean Hannity, things like all your favorite conservative radio show hosts, we've all said the same thing. We have never met a single person who has said that any of this stuff with the election, with the WikiLeaks or anything like that, has ever changed somebody's vote. That they were gonna vote for Hillary, and then all of a sudden they decide to vote for Donald J. Trump. The same thing, same thing, but in sort of a different context, was confirmed yesterday through Comey, which was he has no evidence that any actual votes were changed or manipulated by the Russians. So in other words, if you went in there and you pulled your lever for Donald J. Trump or for Hillary Clinton, he does not believe that there is any evidence, has he seen any evidence that shows that the Russians took your vote and swapped it. Absolutely zero. So all these different narratives that Hillary Clinton has been trying to go on and all the narratives that all the mainstream media and the Democrats have been trying to go on in trying to not only discredit and bring down Donald J. Trump, but to discredit and put a question in Americans' minds in terms of if you can or cannot trust our election process has absolutely been put out. The fire has been put out by James Comey. Now, you may look at James Comey <coughs> and see a buffoon. I see him a little differently. I see a guy who went up there yesterday and told the absolute truth, even at his own detriment. Now he went up there thinking he would be somewhat sly and sort of save himself and try to paint himself as being kept and courageous, but it didn't work that way for him. I believe he was honest in what he said for the most part. He may have had some of his dates a little bit messed up or, or, or changed up. I'm not gonna hold him to the fire for that. But for the most part, he really said what he believed. And what he said uh, absolutely works in President Trump's favor. It, it works in our favor. And it works completely against Hillary Clinton 
and Bill Clinton and Loretta Lynch because that's the other big revelation that came out yesterday. And that is the fact that he decided to get up and tell the world about the email scandal in his own words because of the fact that Loretta Lynch came down on him not to call it an investigation, but rather to call it a matter. The same word used by Hillary Clinton's campaign. And this was all inspired right after the tarmac meeting between Bill Clinton and Loretta Lynch. Anybody who doesn't see how despicable and dirty the Clintons and the Obama administration is after yesterday's testimony is a helpless human being. And I don't say that as a criticism with with any vinegar. I mean it, you know, I, I feel bad. Anybody who sat there and listened to that is in complete denial and I don't really think is playing with a full deck. I mean, it's almost sad for anybody today to get up there and still try to make any any of these claims. And, and it's sad for anybody to get up there and try to say that Hillary Clinton lost this election because it was wrongdoing that brought her down, that it was unfair. It's just, or that it wasn't a legitimate uh, election. You know, President Trump won because he won the right areas. That's the way the game is played, and that's that. The other important thing, and this is one of the things that's gonna carry on, and to be quite honest, I really don't care about this part, and I wish they would just drop it, because the American people, we're tired of this. Even a guy who makes money, you know, that is how I make my living, you know, with our news and our website. I'd rather just start, I'd rather tell my, uh, you know, writers, assign them to something else. You can't, it's the only thing that's out there. And here's what I'm talking about. James Comey yesterday, in having the uh, diarrhea of the mouth that he had, well, he basically said that he leaked information to his friend who leaked it to a reporter. Now, he is going to try to play that this is his own private information and that he did no wrongdoing. I ain't gonna fly. President Trump has already said today, they're putting out that they're gonna start to look into this heavily to go after Comey for leaking. You can't do that. In fact, there is an FBI handbook. It is uh, when you get a job at the FBI, you have to sign this document. And it's basically like a code of conduct. And so when you sign this code of conduct, it basically says that you will not, you won't do what Comey did. That's the simplest way of saying it. Now, what we don't know is at, at, uh, at the FBI director level, whether or not he had to sign that document, but one would assume that he maybe did prior to that. Who knows? We don't know. But assuming he did sign that document, this guy, he may have calculated that he's not in a world of trouble but he's in a world of trouble. And if he's not in a world of trouble long term, boy, is it gonna cost him a lot of money in legal fees. So he may be thinking ahead of how he's gonna write his memoir and his book, and how he's gonna make a lot of money doing all that stuff. But you can bet your bottom dollar that those proceeds that he gets, that's all gonna be going to a lawyer and a legal team. Because President Trump, I think, learned his lesson from allowing Hillary Clinton loose after the election. I don't think he's gonna let the same mistake strike twice. But then again, who knows? Because we got we'll, we'll talk about the tweet that he made this morning. Some lessons just don't seem to be learned, I don't know. But anyway, I guess the good news is that a lot of these things that the news and the election and, and, the, and the Democrats have been trying to pound on should really go away. They won't go away. They'll keep on talking about them, but it's a very hard case for them to make. Now, moving past that, President Trump is not in the clear if you want to talk in that sort of way. Yeah, he he's not he wasn't under investigation. Doesn't mean he's not under investigation now. Um, you know, under uh, under Mueller. And you know, he said he's vindicated in a tweet this morning. He may feel vindicated but he still has a probe going on. And this guy Mueller, you know, he's gonna be looking under every stone. And although the president likes to believe in his head that this has gone away, unfortunately, it's still here. And so Lord knows what they'll pull up next or what they'll try to pull up next. And like I said to you, uh, they will definitely start to look down the road of if there's any of these tapes that we talked about. So stay tuned on that because the Democrats, 
and the lamestream media hate President Trump. And they recognize the fact that in order to get back the uh, Congress, in order to eventually get back the White House, that it's all about taking down him. You know, they take him down, they keep on staining him. Republicans want to stay away from him. The more the Republicans stay away from him, the less any legislation ever has a chance of meaningful legislation of getting through. They just keep on kicking the can down the road. And so when that happens in the midterms, what winds up happening is that Republicans will take it out on them. They just won't show up. It's hard enough to get people to, to come on midterm elections. And now they'll turn around, they'll lose their faith. Oh, I'm not electing this guy. He did nothing. And so therefore, you know, we start to lose some seats in both the House and the Senate. And then when it turns around and it comes midterm elections, you know, some of the people who are independents who reluctantly voted for him, well, next time they're not going to vote. These people don't vote based on party. They vote based on what's going on. And although there are new jobs being created, you know, not everybody's out of a job. A lot of people have jobs. But they still have very high health insurance premiums. You know, they still uh, don't like the way that they're taxed. They still don't like the way that the illegal aliens are uh, penetrating into our schools. And they don't like them standing on the side of the road. And those things still exist. And so they're not going to look. They're not going to say, hey, I, I got a job under President Trump. No, they can say, I had a job. And I thought this guy was going to change everything where I was going to put more money in my pocket. And that ain't the case. No. And so although it's really dandy that the stock market uh, has rallied, although I think that that's going to start to decline, um, you know, it's not enough. Not enough people own stocks. Not enough people have 401ks. Not enough people have money in the stock market to say, well, listen, all right, my wages haven't gone up and my taxes are still way high and my health insurance is uh, the size of a mortgage, but at least my uh, at least my Home Depot and my Facebook and my IBM stock went up. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do that at all because most of them don't have it. And if they do have it, they don't have enough to make it substantial enough for them to feel happy or to lessen their pain on the other end. Well, there's the bells. So anyhow, that's that. So stay tuned in terms of the whole Comey thing, but the obstruction of justice stuff, although the left would like you to believe that there's still something there, let's keep in mind that the president, according to James, James Comey, said, I hope, I hope you can let this go. The guy yesterday, the senator yesterday, put it best. There has never been anybody who has been prosecuted for hoping, you know, although hope and change in Barack Obama. You could probably tie that together and do something. But anyhow, it basically comes down to the fact that if President Trump did in fact say, I hope that you can make this go away, or I hope, or whatever his exact words were, you know, maybe he said it, maybe he didn't, but either way, it's not enough to do obstruction of justice because I hope, I hope that I win the lottery. I hope that uh, President Obama loses all of his money. I hope, I'm not held accountable for any of that stuff. You could hope for anything. And so at the end of the day, if those are the words that President Trump used per James Comey, then all's fine. And so we have to go through this disgusting, costly, stupid process, which does absolutely nothing but just delay the things that really need to be taken care of in this country. So that said, I'm going to move on to the next topic. And the next topic is the president's tweets. There is a vicious cycle that takes place. And I know a lot of you disagree with me on this. That's the beautiful thing about where it is we live in America. You can say it's black, I could say it's white, and we could still be friends. Yesterday, the president didn't tweet. And I was like, wow, is that fantastic? I mean, it was fantastic. No tweets, no bam bombastic remarks, no tongue-in-cheek jokes, no, boy, James Comey has a lot of bags under his eyes. No, you know, nothing. He was just quiet. He went off and did a speech. You know, he just acted like a president, blew it off. 
fantastic. Everything worked in your favor, as far as I'm concerned. You know, let it go, move on, talk about infrastructure. He couldn't do it. He could not do it. To me, that's a bad signal. That is a bad signal, man. And I'll tell you why. When the president took over Washington, D.C., and he made the tweet about Obama illegally wiretapping him in the way that he wrote it, you know, I remember saying to myself, boy, he should have really consulted with a lawyer first before he did that. But it kind of slipped away. He got out of that one. <clears throat> then, when he tweeted about Arnold Schwarzenegger's ratings, I was like, no presidents don't do that, man. But he got away with it. We moved on. When he spoke to Congress in that uh, special impromptu invitation he got from Paul Ryan, I really thought, I mean, I really thought that was like the first day of the presidency, you know? I was like, okay, look, he's been in there for a few weeks. He sort of caught his groove, got all the kinks out, you know, and now he kind of feels it. He sees what it's like, you know? I mean, I imagine the first time he really felt like, wow, I'm president, was at the inauguration. But past that, you know, when he's in that big chamber there and he's given and he's addressing all of Congress, I mean, he must have felt like, wow, I'm really the president of the United States. And he delivered, man, he delivered a home run. I mean, that wasn't a home run, it was a grand slam in the bottom of the ninth grand slam. But then the next day, he went right back to the other stuff. And I was like, wow, I, I don't understand it. When he went away on his trip overseas, and I saw the way he acted for those nine days, I said, that's the president, man. That's the guy who I elected. And man, I think he's finally got it because he's getting his butt kicked here at home with all the negative news, fake or not fake. He's getting his butt kicked with it. He can't get his health care stuff through. The tax reform stuff isn't going as smooth as he thought it was going to go. You know, he's got one issue after the next and he's away and he got away from this stuff. He's keeping himself busy. Fantastic. Look at this. He's going to see the results of nine days of not tweeting out crap. The news lays off him. They don't have anything to feed off. Comes home. Doesn't even wait a day. Boom, 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 boom. Starts all over again. Then a couple nights ago, three o'clock in the morning, tweets out things that contradict his own agenda for the travel ban, slams his own Department of Justice. I just, it baffles the mind. I just don't understand it. And so now, yesterday comes, and he's absolutely silent and quiet. And I'm led to believe that the lawyers have finally said, you have no more wiggle room, sir. <laughs> no more tweets, man. Just let this thing unfold. And so he listened and he was busy and he's traveling. He's giving his speech or whatever. This morning comes, 6 a.m. Boom, tweet. You know, he's got to say, boy, that Comey's such a leaker. You know, yeah, we already knew that, sir. We were told that yesterday. We knew that. We didn't need you to say it. You didn't need to say it. You should have confined yourself to a room where there was absolutely no Twitter access. You should go and focus solely on that infrastructure deal. I should have gotten a tweet that said, today I'll be laying out infrastructure plans. I should have got a tweet about something that was about the issues facing America, not about your vindictive personality towards James Comey. Whether he deserves it or not, you're the President of the United States. You are supposed to take a certain amount of high road. Now, I don't mean the Michelle Obama's high road. I mean, you are a statesman. You're supposed to be a statesman. And we could get past this. And yet you're gonna kick Comey in the shins. You know, sometimes less is more, you know? Let the guy kick himself in the shins like he did yesterday and let the scene play out instead of dictating. And I just don't understand it. And I'll tell you what, when I see this stuff, it, it, you know, I'm a forecaster, I'm a speculator. And that's how I, that's how I operate. And I don't like any of this. You guys may all be feeling great about today, about all this stuff. Oh, he's vindicated, he's this and this and this and this. You know, to me, 
That's like watching a football game because a guy made a nice catch to say we won. Uh, there's a lot of time left on the clock, folks. And uh, unfortunately, putting out tweets like that, it's just more of the same. And people just lose confidence. And, you know, it's just not, I don't know. It's just this vicious cycle. And, and for those of you who think, oh, well, he's being transparent. There's no transparency in that. There's no transparency in that. That's childish. If that's what you wanted, if you want tweets that are childish, you know, I'm sure you could go to Nickelodeon's page. They'll have childish tweets. You know, go to Rosie O'Donnell. She has childish tweets. You know, but I don't know. I still got a lot of friends like myself who are paying a lot for their health insurance. I got a lot of friends like myself who are overtaxed. I got a lot of friends like myself who are, you know, saying, boy, when will I be able to really take that vacation I want to take? And there's a lot of different things going on. And these are the things, you know, we want solved. And it's just the same old, same old. And yes, DML, you're very down. You're bringing me down. I'm just telling you what it is. You know, it is. It's a vicious cycle. And... I, you know, the markets, the stock markets, eventually, you know, you're seeing it already. I saw it already. It went up, you know, when we were doing the walk and talk yesterday, the stock market went up, you know, went up this much. Oh, okay, this is good. Now, then the realists came in and said, no, it's not good. It's not good. You know, what's really good is if this guy gets back to his agenda, and is he going to be able to get his agenda through? And it's just an ever, ever ending distraction. The, 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 the White House has spokespeople. Those spokespeople are supposed to speak for the president. So you got a spokesperson in uh, Sarah Huckabee. You've got uh, Sanders. You've got Sean Spicer. You've got a bunch of different spokespeople who can get up and actually speak on the president's behalf. It's not like we're going to be shut out of information at any given time. And so, I don't know, it's almost as if... And I don't mean, it's almost as if he's just got a wish for himself to just, it's almost like he likes it. He, he likes it. He likes, he, he likes, he complains about the mainstream media, but I think he thrives off it. And, uh, you know, and then when you look under the covers, you know, I go to you about immigration. This all got lost yesterday because the Comey thing basically took all the air out of the room. But there were two major news pieces that were out yesterday. Number one is that so far under the president, 100,000 dreamers under the DACA, under President Obama's DACA, deferred action, they've been, they've been allowed to stay. They've been allowed to renew and basically get their amnesty. 100,000 dreamers. So in other words, your kid or your grandkid now has a hundred thousand extra people to compete against for that spot in college or for that in-state tuition or for that job they now have to compete with people who are here illegally the president promised he promised as part of his campaign promised that he would undo daca and he's not doing anything about it. He would be able to do that easily. He can do it without Congress. He could do it on his own. He's not doing it. And so his supporters, who are true supporters in the sense that they understand the problems and the issues in this country, you know, I'm getting emails from them. They're severely turned off. They're like, all right, you know what? I'm tired of the Comey stuff. I'm tired of, 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 of the... Hold on one second. And two feet on Gardner's Bay. They're tired of this, they're tired of that, they're tired of the Comey, they're tired of the tweets. They want action, you know? And um, and they see something like that and they say, that's a broken promise. And uh, it's, it's disheartening. It is really disheartening. And then the other part that uh, was reported yesterday, which is just as big, this really isn't a Trump thing, but 420,000 deportation cases 420,000 are backlogged to the extent that they will not be addressed until 2022 2022 that seems like another world away 2022 that's when they'll be addressed you know, it's... meanwhile nothing nothing's being done about preventing illegal aliens from working in this country nothing we have a 
uh, pool at the estate. <clears throat> and uh, under my lease agreement, I have to take care of this thing. And I mean, we don't even use it. We're so freaking busy, but it's there. And so, you know, I gotta take, I gotta, I gotta take responsibility for it. So we called in a company um, to come clean the pool. And it just so happens to be the company that used to clean the pool. And so um, I go into the backyard the other day and uh, I actually got my daughter with me and we go to take a look at, you know, how, how the pools are, they're opening it up. There's a guy out there cleaning it, whatever. Go to take a look at the pool. Uh, we're on our lunch break. And as we go out to the pool and we take a look at it, you know, we look down, whatever, and I lean down and I touch the water because I don't know if it's a heated pool or not. So I, I touch it, I'm like, wow, that seems pretty warm. And I say to the guy, I said, is this, is this a heated pool? And the guy looks at me like, I've got two heads. And I said, heated, you know, is the, is the heater on? Is, is there a heater for this thing? And he says, no habla ingles. Picked up the phone, called Miss Mary, and said, get rid of these people immediately. And so now we've got a college kid um, through a connection of my kids who is now coming and cleaning the pool. And the point being is these people are just here free to work. And look, look what it was. I got a kid, a college kid, an American cleaning the pool for me instead than I do a company that's hiring illegal aliens. So for anybody who says that uh, these people that are here are taking the jobs that Americans don't want to do, it's baloney. It's absolutely baloney. When are we going to start holding the company's feet to the fire? I mean, it's all great and all to be getting rid of MS-13, uh, but at the end of the day, they really mostly kill themselves. So when are we going to get rid of the people who are killing the job market? When are we going to get rid of the people that, you know, are once they're gone, our college students, the ones who do want to work, the ones who aren't snowflakes in our mommy and daddy's, you know, Amex card every day. When are we going to open up so this way we get jobs? I got a perfect example here. Perfect example. Got a college kid now doing the job that th this company had sent uh, an illegal to, to go do. I'm not going to have the illegal alien sitting there on that property putting me at risk god forbid he or she or whoever they're hiring gets hurt it's absolutely insane get off my property it was that quick boom and that's all anybody who comes to work for us anybody who comes to work for us you can't hire illegals and yet they're everywhere they're absolutely everywhere so i get these emails from you folks and i wanted you to let you know that i am acknowledging it and that tonight my letter to the president will actually acknowledge the fact that um, I'm not even talking about the tweets anymore. I'm so frustrated with it. I've got to, if I, if I don't let them go, they'll consume me. Uh, I'm just going to be point blank. You said that you were going to get rid of uh, DACA, and yet you're, you're doing nothing but helping it. When do I get a tweet about that? You know, when, when do I get a tweet about the fact that we're going to hold people accountable for hiring illegal aliens? That's what I want to know. You know. When do we get that? Because that's simple. I don't need Paul Ryan for that. Oh, well, anyway. I'm driving because I have a hornet. Sorry. So, all right. Well, anyway, that's that. Um, short walk and talk today. I got a lot of stuff going on and uh, I got to address it. So, uh, we will speak to you on Monday. Till then, uh, God bless you. God bless our troops. God bless our president in these United States. And God bless every person who has been affected by somebody stealing their job that shouldn't be here legally. It is pathetic. It needs to change. And uh, our elected officials, including President Donald J. Trump, have to um, be held accountable for when they make false promises. And that's what my job is, and that's why I'll do it. And oh, may I tell you that I would never, ever make a promise and not fall through with it. It's just not in my DNA. All right. We shall see you later. Bye. Hey, letting the audience build. Just a little uh, heads up. There are uh, leaf blowers ahead, so it will get noisy. So we will just have to bear through that. Uh, for those of you that are uh, jumping on and you always like to know what we're gonna cover today, I'll give that to you quick as we build up the audience. So uh, number one, for the most part, we're gonna talk about Comey. A lot to talk about there. We 
discussed it a little bit yesterday during the hearings, but um, there has been a lot that's gone on since then. So we will discuss that quick. And as I said, I'm approaching these lawn mower, uh, lawn mowers and leaf blowers, so it's going to probably get pretty noisy um, for a couple of seconds anyway. And then yeah, we've got guys driving 100 miles an hour down the sidewalk. Uh, and then uh, another thing we'll talk about is the president's tweets and the third and last part uh, and which I think is the most important part we'll talk about uh, immigration and a thing called DACA which is deferred action for what they call dreamers and so that's uh, the extent of our walk and talk today as you see I'm back in the street uh, not at the estate today and uh, but I will be heading back there and that is that so uh, I think we have waited long enough we begin so if you were on a uh, spaceship and you traveled to Mars yesterday you probably didn't get to see the testimony of former FBI director James Comey but assuming that you weren't on Mars no matter where else you were in the world you saw what took place if you didn't watch the whole thing which I can't say I didn't blame you uh, you saw clips of it and the clips, as far as I'm concerned, were just as powerful, or just as meaningful, or just as stupid, whichever way it is that you want to look at the clip, as they were, they are just like that in part, as they are in whole. And so, anyway, if we were to really just drill down into some of the more important things that took place, Democrats and the, and the lamestream media. Yesterday, James Comey put a lot of things to bed, and I mean, a lot of things to bed and so one of the more important parts that he put to bed was the fact that the president was never under any sort of investigation whatsoever for colluding with the Russians now today there are so many people in the mainstream media who have massive egg on their face and so far the only person who I have seen even take this much accountability for that is uh, Chris Matthews over at MSNBC. Other than that, and when I say this much, it was pretty lame. Other than that, they are trying, the lamestream media, to try to hang on to anything they possibly can. They're now refocusing on, oh, we've got to see if we've got these tapes from inside that meeting between Comey and President Trump when President Trump asked to speak to Comey alone. That's even if there is a tape. And the reason why they're going along that route of they're going to want the tapes is because let's assume there is no tape. What they do then is they try to make it look during that hearing. Uh, here's my takeaway, and I hope you agree with me. And if you don't agree with me, I'd love to hear about it politely. The president has forever been under this dark cloud of the Russia narrative. And for those of you who've been with me well before the election, you know that I told you on, I think, day two after the election, or shortly thereafter, that the Russia narrative was going to be the narrative they played for quite some time because it was a very powerful message. It was a very powerful stain. And if they could keep that latched onto the president forever and ever and ever, it would ultimately be the thing that would create... Uh, not only a presidency that couldn't get anything done, but it would also create a situation to where it is that the president would have a very hard time getting anything through Congress, a very hard time getting uh, through the midterms, and a brutally hard time getting reelected. And so I will say they have done a remarkable job at lying to the American people. When I say they, I mean the day as if the president is a liar. At the same time as the president never said there were tapes. He said something to the extent, and I don't quote him, but the tweet was, you better hope there are no tapes. So there goes the next drama. Get ready for that. That will be the next path they take uh, and try to drag this thing through the mud. Because basically it's come down to there is no collusion between President Trump and the Russians or Putin. <coughs> That's number one. Number two, excuse me, number two, is, and this is very important, but of course this will die out. In fact, it's probably already died out already. Comey basically said yesterday 
that a, an incredible amount of stuff that he has read in these papers, the New York Times, the Washington Post, USA Today, I mean, he didn't name them, but we know who they are, that they were just downright ridiculous, that listening to some of these accusations and things of that nature of unnamed sources were just laughable and ridiculous. And so it is amazing how it is that we can debunk these stories that are in these um, 